You're hearing it everywhere. A recession's coming. The economy is in a lot of trouble. It's massive stagflation. I think I am on inf on recession watch. And a crash in the stock market and the real estate market. But we have a much worse financial crisis than the one we had in 2008. And 2022 has been a bad year for the stock market, particularly growth stocks. So let's talk about the problems that exist that could send this economy into a recession. The first problem being inflation. Numbers just came in and inflation's at 7.5%. That's a 40 year high. And the Fed's original stance that inflation is just gonna be transitory, that statement now is looking dead wrong. And Americans are really feeling this inflation and higher food prices, rents across the country have skyrocketed, and the price of gasoline has almost tripled since the bottom point during the pandemic. And to combat this inflation, many people are expecting that the Federal Reserve are gonna raise interest rates very soon. It's not a matter of if at this point, it's when and by how much. Analysts are predicting that we're gonna see these rate hikes very soon. And one analyst even projected that we'd see as many as eight rate hikes over 2022. And other analysts have even projected that we could see a single rate increase of 100 basis points. These actions that we're expecting to see the Federal Reserve take will cause contractionary pressures within the economy and will hurt growth and also employment numbers. However, this is what needs to be done in order to combat inflation. And then in other major world news, you have Russian troops lining the border of Ukraine, preparing for a possible invasion. And the US has even said that they believe that an invasion could be coming in the following days. And as this potential world conflict is brewing, this could cause further potential harm to the state of the economy. Now, to answer the question, are we headed for a recession in 2022? Let's look back at historical data back from World War II to now to see certain reasons why economies have slipped into recessions. First, let's understand what a recession is exactly. The definition of a recession is negative growth in two consecutive quarters. Now, this definition was fudged a little bit during the COVID-19 recession because there were not two negative quarters of growth, but the numbers were just so dramatically bad that they determined that that was a recession as well. But for the previous 12 recessions, they had all followed that guideline of two negative growth quarters consecutively. Now this graph shows growth rates dating back to World War II. And each gray bar along this graph represents a recession. And since 1945, there have been officially 13 recessions. I did a little digging on what exactly were the reasons for each one of these 13 recessions. And when looking at the results and the reasons why, there were two constants. One being the Federal Reserve raising interest rates and two, a major world conflict. And a few recessions, it was a combination of these two. But in eight of the 13 recessions followed a period of the Federal Reserve running contractionary monetary policy and raising interest rates. We also saw recessionary periods following World War II, the Korean War, the Vietnam War, and September 11th. And in fact, there were only three recessions during that time period that weren't caused by one of those two factors. So you can see there's this heavy correlation between the Federal Reserve running contractionary monetary policy and raising interest rates, and then leading to recessionary period after. Are we headed for a recession here in 2022? And I believe the answer is yes. And the reason for that, the Federal Reserve running contractionary policy is the main reason why. Let's just preface this by saying the Federal Reserve has a choice. They can either raise interest rates or keep them low where they are now. Originally, the Federal Reserve planned to keep interest rates near zero through 2023. However, with the building inflation, that no longer seems reasonable. Raising rates will combat inflation, but however, this will have a negative impact on growth and unemployment. Unemployment has gone down significantly since the shutdowns back in March and April of 2020. However, we still have not returned to pre-pandemic levels. And as this contractionary policy is implemented, we will see unemployment numbers go higher and higher. It will be on the Federal Reserve to balance out how they want to conduct policy to keep unemployment low while also trying to combat inflation because what they do has adverse effects to both these categories. Let's face it, the COVID-19 recession was very short and it was largely avoided due to all the stimulus in the economy. 
and in previous definitions that COVID-19 recession wouldn't have even been classified as a recession. But as we move forward past the time of stimulus and now with raising inflation, we are now going to fight some of that turmoil that COVID-19 brought to the economy that was really delayed just due to all the stimulus. And I do believe that it's the right decision for the Federal Reserve to raise interest rates. In fact, they're probably late in doing this, even though that it likely will cause a recession. And in regards to the stock market, I believe the stock market has already priced in a lot of this negativity in the economy. That's why we've seen stock prices come crashing down over the past couple months. And if we are in a period of negative growth for the next few quarters, I believe that the stock market could come down further, although it's already come down a lot. I think it's also likely that we could see the stock market trading sideways for the next year with all this continued volatility that we've seen the past couple months. Now on to the second point that the economy is really fearing right now, and that's the Russia-Ukraine conflict. I believe this is a very serious geopolitical issue, but I'm less concerned on its implications in the market, at least for the short term in the market. Even in worst case, if Putin does invade, I believe this conflict will stay contained to Ukraine. There's just too much to lose if it doesn't. And drawing back from previous examples where we saw the US and the Soviet Union at conflict during the Cold War, there was a separate conflict in Afghanistan where the US was arming the Mujahideen to fight Russians. And I think that that concept of American troops fighting Russian troops is very scary and that would definitely cause the economic repercussions around the world. But there's just too much to lose for it to spill over on um, matters bigger than Ukraine. And that's even if a conflict happens. But even if it does, we're likely to see repercussions in the economy in the post-war period, which was the case in World War II and the Korean War and the Vietnamese War, where the recessions followed the post-war period. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you appreciated my input. I'm curious to hear what you guys think too. So let me know in the comments below and we'll make more videos like this about recessions and economics and global politics. So make sure to subscribe to my channel if you're not. Thank you guys.